and it literally can it can change minute by minute it's constantly fluctuating so that setting that we had earlier was the local pressure setting for Gatwick once we're away from Gatwick it's pretty relevant to us because we're not over Gatwick anymore so the air pressure where we are now is probably different now once we get above that once we get above um, sorry once we get up to a cruising altitude that could be a problem because if you imagine let's say we're flying from Gatwick on the pressure setting from Gatwick let's say there's another aircraft coming back the other way from Jersey on the pressure setting from Jersey they're different pressure settings so we think we're at 11,000 feet they think they're at 12,000 feet but if there's a slight deviation in both of our pressures we could actually both be at the same exactly. altitude okay so once we get above 6,000 feet what we do worldwide is we move over to a standard pressure setting so it doesn't matter where you are in the world everyone's using exactly the same setting and that's how you can make sure, sure that, that we're at the yeah, yeah exactly so that's what we did as we came through 6,000 feet we've turned over to our standard setting okay. right we've just gone through 10,000 feet so we can now release our passengers so we can turn the fasten seatbelt sign off let the passengers get up and move around I know that feeling <laughs> yeah, and um, that's pretty much all we really need to do up here. So we can uh, we can just have two or three minutes of relaxing, but you're not going to get too much time for relax okay. because we're almost getting to Southampton now. It's actually quite a hazy day looking out, isn't it? It's quite a it's quite a smoggy day. It is, yeah. Although it's uh, but this is we we use a real world weather system in the sim. Right, okay. So whatever the weather is and whatever the visibility conditions, wherever we are in the that's world. That's what they're looking at there at this, at this point. Yeah. So what we've got here, we've got clear skies, there's no clouds. But this quite often happens in the summer, you get that haze. Haze, yeah. yeah. So although it's a lovely clear day on the ground, once we're up in the air, you can't see a huge amount. Which just um, underlines really why we're so dependent on everything on our systems. System. Yeah. Okay. So let's just look at our little flight plan so we can see we're just about to get to Southampton the aeroplane will turn at Southampton so I don't know if you can see over here over my side that's the Isle of Wight down there okay. <coughs> oh, excuse me my hay fever is really playing up at the moment um, yeah I can see we're just flying over um, Southampton docks as well so the aeroplane will start its turn in a second moving out towards that point all tac okay. and what we're going to do once it's turned we're going to take it off the autopilot and get you flying it for a little bit. Because <laughs> the plan is, what we want to try to do is get you to land it. Okay. All right. Yeah, so there's the uh, docks there of Southampton. Yep. I'll go, yeah. <coughs> so I'll come back from, uh, I was out in Florida in March, we come back over uh, oh, nice. this, this way, on the way back. It's all winter, uh, south of the Isle of Wight. You know, it's quite, uh, it's quite smart, because it was a lovely morning, and... Uh, you know, you can see, you know, obviously you can see everything. Those clear days. Fabulous. So. What part of Florida did you go to? Uh, just Orlando. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love it over there. Yeah, I do. I've, well, I've been, uh, I think, about fourteen times now. So. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's better in here anyway. So. <laughs> Definitely got the weather. <coughs> okay, so we're very much on our way, and one thing that's probably. Um, jumped out to you compared to what you did at the VA because I'm, I'm guessing you did a lot of hand flying there yep, yeah, I did. so what we're doing now we're doing a flight more like a real flight crew would okay. and it's pretty much all on the automation all automated, yeah. yeah so in many ways we're more acting out the job of system managers here rather than pilots because the airplane's quite happily handled flying itself you know we're just making sure it's doing what we want it to do Supposed when to we do. want it to do it um, and with that in mind, we can start setting up for our uh, descent actually now as well. Because believe it or not, as quick as we're up, it's only a short little flight, flight to Jersey. To Jersey yeah. um, so looking ahead of us, we've got this point here called TD. That stands for top of descent. Okay. So that's the point. When we get to that point, that's when we're going to need to um, start descending. So it's just coming up to about 50 miles away from us, okay. which we're going to hit quite quickly. Um, I want to do a couple of things as well before we... Before we um, do anything more just to help us um, plan our approach to Jersey Jersey airports here but it's not very obvious is it so if you press fix and then just type in the code for Jersey eg JJ and then pop that in where it says fix we'll now get a little fix ring around Jersey okay now let's put a 10 mile ring around so if you press slash 10 
and then put that in underneath. That will give us a 10 mile radius ring around. Now let's do a 30 mile radius ring. Same again. Uh, the one below, one, that's one, it, one. yeah. Otherwise it will cancel out the cancel one above. Out, yeah. There we go, so it just helps us to sort of judge how far we are away from the airport. Okay. We now want to get the aircraft set up so that it's able to descend. By the time we get to this point here, Jersey, this is actually a little, a little uh, radio beacon on the edge of the island. Okay. We're going to want to be down to 1,800 feet. So if we just dial, look, 2,000 will do. Let's dial down to 2,000 feet. Other way. That's it. Now you can see the aircraft isn't descending yet, even though you're spinning that round. But we're still flying at 15,000 feet. Right, we're okay. not descending. But what will happen there now is that as soon as we get to this top of descent point, then the aircraft's going to start descending start for us. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. So I think what we can do now, if you're happy to, is let's get it off the auto okay. and get you flying it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so just as a little recap, back to this pink cross, which is called the flight director. Okay. That works in two ways. We've got a vertical line, which is going to move left and right. That's telling you whether you've got to go left or right, and basically you follow it. So if that vertical pink line moves to the left, turn to the left. left. You've got a horizontal line which is going to move up and down. If it moves up, it's telling us we've got to go up, so you're going to pull back. If it goes down, then you're going to push forward to go down. And the idea is just little small movements, just try and keep that picture as you see it now with the okay. nose bang in the center. Okay. Well, so you when you're ready, yep. um, the autopilot disconnect button's just there. You'll hear a little alarm. Don't be alarmed, that's just telling you that you're flying it. There we go. Remember, nice and smooth on the controls. God, it really is a murky day. It's not very nice out there. No, not at all. <laughs> that was me thinking it's going to be a lovely little flight down to Jersey. B beautiful blue skies. I didn't didn't counter on the didn't think about the haze. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm, we're just going to deviate very slightly from our little flight plan because I want to give you a couple of turns. Okay. So. The first one's going to be a turn to the left, so let's watch what happens. In a minute, that's going to start moving left. Okay. When it does, just smoothly follow it. You ready? Yep. Okay, okay here we go. This is just really to get you, um, get you the feel of the aeroplane. Now it's going to start moving right in a minute because it's going to want you to roll the wings level. So okay. just follow it. Nice. And apart from that flight at um, Virtual Aviation, you've never done anything like this before? Uh, I fly a lot online, like... Um Simulations. I fly Spitfires a lot. So ah. I've, got about, I've got about six thousand hours on the uh, clod at the minute. So uh, okay. I'm a bit of a bit of a bit of a nutter to fly my Spitfire. Ah, uh, okay, so okay. So I've got quite a lot of time on uh, gotcha. simulations and that. So ah, you didn't tell me that bit, oh, did, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> you kept that one to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, it shows actually because um, your flying's actually really good. That's kind of why I, I think asked. I think if I was just had a more, uh, I was a little bit more like in the uh, uh, academic side of things. I'd love to have been able to have done this like as a career. But well, you've definitely got a nice, um, a nice control on the aeroplane. No doubt about that. So the biggest difference between flying something like this and flying something like a Spitfire, you're probably noticing, is that it's a lot heavier on the controls. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. slower to react. Yeah. And the control movements need to be small, whereas on a Spitfire, you'll chuck it around. You, you can uh, sort yeah. of throw it a lot. Because yeah. it's the difference between driving a sports car or driving an HGV. That's it. You yeah, know. Same, same sort of thing. Yeah. I'd also... Uh, 
just about to fly the uh, DCS um, down again. I'll okay. Fly, I'll fly the eight sound. It's like um, like with the start up on the aircraft we did earlier on this earlier. You know, I, I sort of I could jump in a A10 nowadays and you know start it up from cold and yep. get it all up and running. And yeah, that's really good DCS, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. We got the F18 coming out um, anytime soon. Oh, now, awesome. So I'll tell you what I had to go at yesterday, for the very first time, I've never done it, so I'm obviously a bit behind the times, is I've had a, I had to go on one of these Oculus Rift virtual reality yep, headsets. Yep. Have you done that? I've got, uh, I've actually got the Hive at home, I haven't got Have it you? set up, I've, I don't think my um, graphics card is sort of like man enough to do it. I think that's the problem, isn't it? But yeah. the, what it was, it's actually one of our customers, and he's been saying to me, oh, come and have a go, come and have a go. Anyway, I went and had a go absolutely blew my brain blew your head away, yeah. it was amazing yeah. he put me in a little mall just like a little light aircraft and like, it felt like i was sat in the aircraft absolutely unbelievable i think i think like you say if you get it all set up right and uh you can um you know it's, it's certainly uh it's like say my mate mate at work he's got one he said it's uh just it's incredible a, certainly blind 